Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in again. Today's video will be the first part of two videos. Uh, in this first part, we'll be talking about how to run a hierarchical regression. And in the next video, what we'll be talking about is how to write up and interpret, as well as how to make tables for our hierarchical regression analysis. So in today's video, we'll be going over how to compute descriptive statistics and a correlation matrix for our data set. So these are just good practices uh, in order to inspect the data before running the actual hierarchical regression. And then we'll go into the hierarchical regression. And what we'll be doing is we'll be estimating three regression models in sequence. And for each regression model, we'll be adding a set of predictors. And our biggest question is how does each set of predictors contribute to the prediction of Y? And so in order to formally test this, we'll be looking at the R squared change. And this is an F test that tests whether the additional sets of predictors offer a significant amount of prediction for our criterion, which in this case is Y. So again, today we'll be going over how to estimate the hierarchical regression. And then in the next video, we'll be going up how to write, we'll be going over how to write up the hierarchical regression, as well as how to create some tables to organize the information from our analysis in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for this video, we'll be working in SAS, and so I have SAS open already. And then I've also opened this file here called week5 underscore template SAS. Um, I've uploaded this template onto, um, I've uploaded this template online, and essentially what it is, it's showing uh, these comments here, which are just headings that will help us organize our syntax as we run through how to estimate a hierarchical regression. Again, you can use this if you'd like, and uh, you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, so the first thing we're going to get into is we have to read in our data. So again, we're going to use point and click to read in our tab delimited file. So we'll go to File, Import Data, uh, Tab Delimited, we'll click Next. Uh, my data set is in the C drive in the data sets folder. Again, remember nothing will show up here at first because um, we're limiting file types to .txt and the file is a .dat file, a .dat file. So we'll switch this to all files. And then here is reg data 2 and it's a .dat file. I'll go ahead and open that. Click next. I want to name this reg data 2 and then I can just finish. So 150 observations and six variables, that's correct. And so our data set has been successfully read in. The next thing I want to do is we want to set the ODS to HTML. I'll go ahead and run that. And then remember, the, uh, these two lines here, uh, you'd want to save until the end. So I leave it commented, um, commented out. Uh, this is, these two lines, along with the very, very last two lines, are for exporting your output to a Word document. So if you're interested in doing that, at the end of writing all the syntax, all you'd have to do is delete this asterisk, and then delete this asterisk, and this asterisk, and you would just run everything in between, um, highlight everything, and then we'll, you know, obviously you'll have some syntax in between here. You'll run everything and then it will export it to a Word document. Uh, but for now, I'll just go ahead and keep these commented out. All right. So where we'll start is we'll start with um, computing some descriptive statistics uh, for our data set, reg data 2. So I'm going to be using proc means and data reg is equal to reg data2 and then I'm going to run. Go ahead and highlight this. Okay. So here focusing on the mean and standard deviations we see that uh, y, so we have our six variables y and then x1 through x5 
Um, y has a mean of about 50 with a standard deviation of about 10. X1 has a mean of about 10 with a standard deviation at around 3. X2 has a mean at around 10 with a standard deviation around 3. X3 has a mean around 5 with a standard deviation of, at about 2. Now I'm rounding here roughly. And then X4 and X5 are very similar to X3 uh, with means around 5 and standard deviations around 2. We have the minimum uh, values and maximum values for our variables. And so now we have a little bit of an understanding of, um, of what's going on with our variables here. OK. And then uh, just as a good habit, we'll go ahead and request the correlation matrix here using proc core. Our data set again is reg data 2. And then I'll go ahead and run that. Now, the cool thing about the, the core procedure is that you get your um, descriptive statistics as well. So you could just abandon the means or proc means and just use core and you'll get your descriptive statistics as well as the correlation matrix. But I'm just showing uh, proc means here for completeness. But either way, it doesn't matter. It gets you to the same place. So here I want to focus on our correlation matrix. And so we can see that um, everything seems to be at least moderately correlated with Y. So all of our predictors, X1s through, X, through X5, the smallest correlation is at about 2.24, with the largest correlation at, at about 0.43. So those all seem to be pretty moderate, maybe even high. And then just inspecting, we can see that there are some uh, small correlations here. Like here, we have 0.04. That's between X4 and X3. And then we also have, uh, this one's quite small as well, point zero, negative 0 0.01 between x1 and x3. So again, a correlation matrix just gives us an idea of how all of our variables are related to one another. All right. Now we'll get into running our hierarchical regression. So what we'll be doing is we'll be, um, we will be estimating three regression models, and, an, and at, for each regression model, we'll be adding a an additional set of predictors. And then our main question is, do those, um, do, the, do the addition of the sets of predictors from one model to the next, do they add significant prediction to our model, above and beyond the predictors that were already in the model? So to start doing that, we'll go ahead and um, estimate our first regression model using procreg. Again, our data is reg data 2. And then we'll use the model statement to define our model. So y is predicted from x1 and x2. Now remember, in SAS, uh, we separate predictors with just a blank space. Uh, I'm going to request the standardized estimates just in case. And then I'll go ahead and run this. So here, we're just estimating our regression model like usual. Nothing new. OK, remember, we get all of these diagnostic plots that we don't care about right now. Um, and so we want to focus here on this output. So for the model, on 2 and 147 degrees of freedom, our F value is 11.8, which is statistically significant since it's less than 0.05. So as a whole, our model offers significant prediction of Y. Um, R squared, so about 14% of the variance in Y is, ex is accounted for by the model. And then our adjusted R squared, which is, which is still pretty close to R squared, so that's good. No worries there. And then looking at our um, parameter estimates, remember that the intercept could be important, but we typically don't worry about that. So I'll just focus here on x1 and x2, the two slopes. And so here we have our parameter estimate and our standard error. And then we have our p-value, which is less than 0.05. So x1 is significant. Here's our standardized estimate in case you want to report it. And then for x2, we have our parameter estimate and associated standard error. 
as well as our p-value, again, less than 0.05, so this is statistically significant as well, and then standardized estimate to go along with it. All right, so the interpretations for x1 and x2, it's the same. So um, for every u, uh, so for hol uh, holding x2 constant, y is expected to change 0.72 units with rounding for every unit increase in x1, and the same goes for x2. So for holding, uh, if we're holding x1 constant, y is expected to change 0.89 units for every unit increase in x2. So our interpretations of the slopes remain the same. And this is just like running our typical multiple regression. Nothing new yet. Okay, but this serves as our base model. So in our base model, we have um, x1 and x2 as predictors. All right, so now I want to see how the addition of two predictors, x3 and x4, if that adds a significant amount of prediction to our model. So I'm going to go ahead and use prep proc reg again. Data set is reg data2. And this time for our model, y will be predicted from <clears throat> x1, x2, x3, and x4. So again, <clears throat> we're adding x3 and x4 on top of x1 and x2. I'll request the standardized coefficients again. And then uh, here we're going to use the test statement. And the new predictors, the, way to, the best way to remember this is that the predictors that you're adding, you want to set to 0. So x3 is equal to 0, because we're adding that predictor, and x4, because we're adding that predictor as well. So x4 is also equal to 0. And so what we're doing is we're running a test to test x, uh, a model with x3 and x4 in it and against the model without x3 and without x4. So that way we get um, the r squared change between a model with our initial set of predictors, x1 and x2, um, and the change with the addition of x3 and x4. So remember, another, uh, the easiest way to remember is whichever predictors that you're adding, so in this case x3 and x4, just set those to 0 in the test statement. And so you'll do x3 equals 0, comma, x4 equals 0, and then you'll end it with a semicolon. All right, and that's all we have to do. And then we'll go ahead and run this. Okay, we scroll up a little bit. Here's our model information. So on 4 and 145 de uh, degrees of freedom, our F value is 21.97. Again, this is a, st a significant F statistic. So our model as a whole accounts for a significant amount of variation in Y. Um, our R squared is point. 38 with rounding, so about 38% of the variance in y is accounted for by our model. That's a lot. And then here we have our intercepts. Sorry, we have our parameter estimates, and we have the intercept here. Again, we're not too worried about that right now. And then for each of our predictors, uh, what we're most interested in are the parameter estimates, the standard errors, and then the p-values. And we can see here, x1 is a significant predictor x2 is a significant predictor, x3 is a significant predictor, and x4 is a significant predictor, because all of the p-values are less than 0.05. And then in this last row, just in case you need it, we have our standardized estimates. Okay, but what do we really care about? Uh, it's this test right here. So on 2 and 145 degrees of freedom, we get an f value of 27.78, which is less than 0.05. So what is this testing for? This is testing for the R squared change. So from model one, where our predictors were only x1 and x2, there was a significant change in R squared to our model with x1 and x2 
adding x3 and x4. So the addition of x3 and x4 as a set contribute a significant amount of prediction to our crit criterion y according to this f test here. Again, on 2 and 145 degrees of freedom, our f value was 27.78, and that's less than 0.05, so a significant r squared change. Okay. And then here, this should be regression model 3. We're going to add yet another uh, predictor to see if um, our last predictor contributes a significant amount of prediction. So for this one, it'll be y is equal to x1, x2, x3, x4. So this is model 2. And then we will be adding on x5. Again, STB to request the standardized estimates, and then we will use this test statement again. And this time we only have one predictor that we're adding, x5, and we will set that equal to 0 to test the contribution of prediction of x5 over and above x1, x2, x3, and x4. Okay, run. Then highlight and submit. All right, now if we scroll up, we get our model information again. So on 5 and 144 degrees of freedom, we get an F value of 21.07. Again, less than 0.05, so this is significant. And so our model as a whole contributes a significant amount of prediction to the criterion Y. And again, R square is increasing. So remember, as we add predictors, R square will always increase because we're always accounting for more um, variation or variance in Y. We can never account for less if we're adding predictors. So R square, as you add predictors, R square will always go up. So here it's higher than the last model, it's 0.42, so approximately 42% of the variance in Y is accounted for by our model. Um, looking at our parameter estimates here, uh, again, everything is statistically significant because everything is less than 0.05. So x1 through x5 are significant predictors of y, and then the standardized estimates in case you need them. All right, and again, our main focus here is the r squared change. So according to our f test on 1 and 144 degrees of freedom, our f value is 11.26 and our p-value is less than 0.05. So R square, the R square change again is significant from model two to model three. So X5 as a predictor contributes a significant amount of prediction over and above X1 through X4 because that's what we're testing for between model two and model three. So in model two, which is right here, we have x1 through x4 predicting y, and then in model 3, we have x1 through x5. So the addition here is x5. Okay. So what we did here is we um, estimated our three regression models, and then we tested for the r squared change between model 1 and model 2, and then model 2, and then model 3. And each time we added... Um, a set of predictors. So when we added x3 and x4, there was a significant change in r squared. And then when we added x4 and x5, or sorry, when we added x5, there was a significant um, r squared change. Um, so here we did all of the uh, we did all of the modeling. Um, and then in the next video that uh, in the next video we'll be looking at how to write up the results and interpret the output, as well as how to organize all of the information that we've gathered here into tables. Um, so again, for this video, we ran our hierarchical regression, and then the next video, we'll be going, up, uh, we'll be going over write-ups, as well as tables for the hierarchical regression. And with that, that concludes this video on running a hierarchical regression in SAS.